This is how you create a pinecone vector database in NA10. So what this automation allows you to do is talk to any document you want. For example, I've got this 127 page of Aesop's fables, and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can upload this into a database and allow AI to vectorize it. So when you ask a question to this AI, it will use its database and its knowledge to give you the answers from the document you've uploaded. And in this example, Aesop's Fables. This automation here works really well for unstructured data. For example, Aesop's Fables is just a bunch of words. There is no real structure to it. When I get to the stories, as you can see, there's just a bunch of words to it. If you want something like a document like this one, I would have just uploaded a video about Superbase. Uh, that one's great for uploading tables into a vector database. So then you can use that and chat with your data instead of chatting with something like like a PDF document. But Pinecone's great, especially for someone like a lawyer who wants a bunch of answers to questions and they get hundreds of contracts coming in. That, this is a great automation for someone like that. There are numerous businesses where they have to handle large amounts of data and it involves a lot of sifting through. And this is when a vector database can be super useful. The main tool we're using within this automation is called Pinecone and it's a really cool quick to set up vector database. So the automation all starts off with the Google Drive trigger. How you can get a Google Drive into NA10 is you click this top right plus icon over here, go to Google Drive, and then we're going to be using one of the trigger modules down here. And this one would be called the on changes in a specific folder. So once you have this, this is exactly how I've set up my specific Google Drive node. So um, I've set up to check it every single minute. And then uh, from the folder called files to add, this should be whatever folder you're gonna upload the documents that you wanna store in the vector database. So my files to add obviously have the Aesop's fables. So once we go and grab our document, we wanna download that document. So therefore we can go and upload it to our Pinecone vector store. So this is where we get another Google Drive document. So let me click the plus in the top right again, Google Drive. And then if I show you right over here, and then we click the download a file module right over here. And if I double click this, as you can see, uh, download Google account. Let me try and execute the previous node so I can see what's going on here. And then we want the file download and then we want the ID. So the Google Drive ID, I can see this is wrong. So let me delete this. And then if I go to the ID, which is right over here and I just put that over there. As you can see, this is gonna go grab the Google Drive ID. I think this is the right one. No, this is not the right one actually. We're building with me actually apparently today. So we've got this ID one over here and this one will go and grab the ID from our download a drive module, sorry, from our watch changes in a folder module and then it will download that file for us. There is one thing to note in NA10. It is a little tricky to sign in using Google Drive. You have to go through a bunch of Google APIs and stuff. There are a ton of videos on YouTube and TikTok and all the other social media platforms that teach you how to do this. So I'm not gonna go into this in depth, but essentially you need to go to the Google Workplace console, uh, I think, or the Google API console. Let me check. So it's the Google uh, Google Cloud Console, that's it. And from there, you can go and log into uh, your Google Drive and follow those instructions. They're super clear on YouTube. Okay, so now all our Google Drive stuff is all sorted out. We now need to get the Pinecone Vector Store set up. So we wanna go to Pinecone over here and we wanna click on Sign Up. And once it eventually lets us get to the Sign Up page, we want to create a new account. I'm just going to go create an account with a YouTube, with a Google account. Okay, so now that I've gone and created my account with Pinecone, you can see it gives an API key. You want to make sure you store this API key really safe and you copy it. So I'm just going to quickly go and copy this over here. And then we need to go back to NA10, right? And in NA10, you need to get this Pinecone Vector Store module. So if we go right over here and type in Pinecone, you'll see Pinecone Vector Store when you click on this. We need to get the Add Documents to Vector Store module over here. And when you click on this, it'll open up a module like this. And I've obviously got a Pinecone account, but I'm gonna go create a new credential. So here's my new credential, and you just paste the API key you got from here straight into, oh, not to Aesop's Fables, right into this section over here. So let me just double check I pasted that correctly, and then I click Save. And then you should see connection tested successfully. And this means that you've got Pinecone set up with your account, right? Mine's called Pinecone account too. Okay, so now that we've connected our API key into NA10, we need to come back to Pinecone. Okay, so now you need to click this create index button. And for this use case, we're gonna use the 
text embedding small by OpenAI. But essentially what this is, is a model that allows you to vectorize data. And there are a bunch of other companies that give this kind of model over here, but I'm gonna click the text embedding three small. This will make a lot more sense when I show you what to do on the NA10 side. So once you click this, that's fine. And then we wanna go serverless and our cloud uh, provider needs to be AWS because we're on the free plan um, and all the rest are locked, as you can see. Um, so if you pay for Pinecone, you can get all these other unlocked um, cloud providers, but AWS is the only free one. So we're gonna click AWS and then we have to pick Virginia, US, East one, which is fine. And then we need to click starter plan. And uh, what have I missed over here? So AWS, serverless, Pinecone and index name. Of course, that's very important. I'm just gonna call mine N8N, and then you can go and click create index over here. And then this will go and create a index for you where you can upload your data. And this is where the AI can go and use our rag to kind of you know answer the questions that you're gonna put in the chat. So now that we have our index set up, we need to flick back to the N8N automation and we need to click on this. And then we need to pick the Pinecone index as the one you set it as. So if you set the name as NA10, it'll pop up here as NA10. If you set it up as something else, then it'll pop up as something else. But for me, I called it NA10, so that's what it's gonna be set up as. And then you'll notice when you've set this up, there's an embedding section and a document section. So if I click delete here, as you can see, there'll be a plus icon for embeddings, and then there'll be a plus icon for document. So for embeddings, what you wanna do is you wanna click on this plus, and then you wanna choose the open AI embeddings. This has to be exactly the same as the embedding you use when you set up the index that I showed you earlier. So we obviously use open AI small module. So we need to click on this. We already have our account set up as OpenAI. I have a bunch of videos. I have one that how to connect OpenAI to make.com. It's super similar to how you connect up to NA10. Uh, that will explain to you exactly how to set up an OpenAI API account. But uh, I've already got that set up here. And then you wanna choose the model as text embeddings three small. This is exactly the same module as we used in the index before. Sorry, the exact same model as we used in the index before. And then we just go and connect this up. And then we just delete the old one I had. And then under document over here, we want a default data loader. So this will allow us to load up this data essentially. So we click data loader. And once you've done the default data loader, you just want the data type of data to be in binary. And the other option is JSON. We're not extracting the data from our PDF document. We're just gonna upload the entire PDF document directly into our vector database. So that's why it's binary. We want to load all the input data, not just specific data. We want the whole document to be uploaded. And we want it to automatically detect by MIME type. So data format, right? Uh, how it works is you have a MIME type for every single type of data. So if it's .csv, it'll have a different MIME type. If it has um, .pdf, it'll be a different MIME type. This website over here, which is mimetype.io, has all the different MIME types you can have. So for example, if I do PDF, let me control F, PDF. There we are, application slash PDF is the MIME type for PDF. And every single type of file type has its own MIME type. So we just want to set that to automatically detect by MIME type. So it will just input whatever document we give it essentially. And then we want to set up a text splitter, right? So when you click on this, you should see a recursive character text splitter. You just want to put this, put the chunk size, leaves at a thousand and we want a chunk overlap. So what this means, is this is how it will split out the document itself. It can't upload the whole 120 page document into Pinecone because it is too much data for one separate vector, right? So it wants to split the vectors by the amount of data within the actual PDF. So chunk size a thousand is fine, but we want an overlap. So this way it has context on what the previous vector had and the next vector. So say there's a story. And if I just split the story into by a thousand words individually, right? You're not gonna know which thousand words piece with the other one. But if we put a 200 chunk overlap, this means that there will be some overlap between the words and you can piece together the story. It's the same way here, right? That's exactly what we're doing with this recursive character text splitter. And that's how you set up the left side of this automation that allows you to upload documents to your Pinecone vector database. And now the right side of the automation is super simple to set up actually. So we want to chat with the data itself. So the first thing we need to do is put a trigger, which I don't actually have. So we want a chat trigger over here. Uh, so we've got the chat trigger and let's connect this up to our chat with data. Awesome. So now anytime we send a message in to our chat over here, this is gonna trigger this automation and this question and answer chain. And then we wanna put this question and answer chain in here. So again, we just go here, type in a question and answer chain and click on this. And this will add this node here. 
And this node is set up as basically the prompt is just the JSON chat input. You can change this to an AI agent if you want. In my Superbase tutorial, I do exactly that where I change it to an AI agent. And you can have an AI agent uh, retrieve stuff from a vector data store if you want it to have a bunch more actions depending on what's in a vector store. This is a super simple example of how you can do that. So it's a super simple example and you can make it more complicated with an AI agent. So once we've gone and done this, we need to go and add our chat model. I'm just going to use GPT-40 Mini. It's super cheap and super smart. So that's why that's all set up. Again, you're going to need an open AI API account, um, which you can check one of my previous videos for. And then we need to go and connect a vector store um, retriever, essentially. So if we click on this, uh, we just left the limit as four. It's pretty much what's standard and comes out of NA10. So how you get this module over here is to just go to vector store Sorry, you just, uh, let me delete this and retrieve it. You click on this. Uh, sorry, no, get rid of this. Move this out of the way. Let's click on this. And then you just click on vector store retriever and that this module should pop up. And then after this, you want to go to pinecone vector store and you want to go connect up a pinecone vector store to this. So you click the plus icon again, click on pinecone vector store, and then this vector store should pop up. And similarly, again, we want this one to retrieve documents. So we set this one up as retrieve documents as vector store or chain slash tool. Uh, this is exactly how you also connect up for an NA10 agent. Uh, it's exactly the same kind of idea, except you just replace this first module with an agent. And then you want the embeddings. And again, you have to be very careful with the embeddings you pick. It has to be exactly the same as the embeddings you made when you uh, made the index. In Pinecone, essentially, it should be the... Uh, text embedding three small by OpenAI. So if I go back here, again, we have the uh, OpenAI account text embedding three small. How you can add that in again is just go to click on the plus icon here, then go to embeddings, OpenAI, and then go and create one over there. Uh, make sure I selected the right one. And this one should say text embedding three small. Perfect. Now we can go and ask our document questions. So let's first of all go and actually add our document into our pinecone vector store. So let me click test workflow and this should go and add our document into pinecone. To actually go and connect the default data loader back into the pinecone vector source, let's try it again. So this time it should work. Let's have a look. Yeah, cool. Now it's going to upload all the data into pinecone for us. Okay, so now all our data has been uploaded into our vector store. Let's have a look at what it looks like in pinecone. So as you can see over here in Pinecone, it has all the different types of data all uploaded when this used to be blank before. Okay, so let's actually test out our model, right? So there's a story in Aesop's fable about a fox and some grapes. So let's go and ask the question about the, um, what the fox said, and it should come up with a response. The fox says, what a fool I am, and then he adds, here I am wearing myself out to get a bunch of sour grapes that are not worth graping for, right? And if I go and check in the document to make sure this is true, uh, what a fool I am here I am wearing out to get a bunch of sour grapes that are not worth graping for. As you can see, it grabbed this specific line from this entire doc, this 127 page document, and it was super, super quick when it did it. It's such a valuable automation. And here's another example of a question that actually requires a bit more thought, right? So why does the tortoise remain confident despite being slower in the tortoise and the hare, right? And everyone knows the story, right? Slow and steady wins the race, and that's the whole moral behind the story. And in the tortoise and the hare, the tortoise remains confident despite being slower because he believes his own steady and persistent nature. And it, it can extract parts of a story and have its own opinion on it because it uses AI to do this. It's super, super smart. So that's step by step how you can build a RAG retrieval model using Pinecone and build it out in NA10. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you could interact with it. It helps out a ton. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.